Watch this. Ahead for you on this Friday edition of the 208. Today, March 24th, the projected last day for the Idaho legislature, but no surprise, it's not over just yet. But they did cram in a lot of work today, and we're going to break it down for you and look ahead to next week to see what they have left to do. One bill talked about, though, was our favorite piece of legislation for the year, Idaho's new state dinosaur. Did it make it to the governor's desk? We're going to show you the debate and tell you the full details. And it's day three of Tree Fort, and a lot of jamming has already been done. We're going to give you a little weekend highlight from the festival to get you amped up as we go into Tree Fort Weekend 2023. Well, it's Friday. You made it through the week. We are so glad that you are with us. And if you're an Idaho lawmaker, there is a chance you're still at work over at the big state house. Hmm. Well, they're working hard on a Friday trying to crush through the final budgets and bills, and they will not finish tonight, no. And we'll get to that conversation of when they will wrap up in just a minute. But it is a whirlwind down at the state house as lawmakers are getting things done to wrap up the year. And you can tell that they're trying to finish because they had a Senate State Affairs Committee meeting at 7 o'clock this morning. Yeah, that's super early. One committee member even calling it the Senate State Affair saving time. Regardless of the timing, though, the committee had a mountain of work to tackle. Items about relationships with foreign entities, laws for the legislature, and guns. And maybe the headline item, something we've discussed here for weeks, what to do about content in Idaho libraries. Well, some say there is harmful material to minors in accessible places at school and community libraries. Others say simply isn't the case. So legislation to restrict the distribution, promotion, or dissemination of obscene materials or materials harmful to minors, that was presented early this morning. And the bill includes a penalty of up to a year in jail or a fine of up to $1,000 or both. And legislation also sets up a citizen review committee for content in the libraries all across Idaho. Each entity would have their own committee. Now, those committees for each entity would include parents, members of the community, local law enforcement, and a religious representation from the community as well. And right after that bill was pitched, a bill immediately followed that would give district courts a quick turnaround to inspect material that is questioned as harmful as a part of a court process. The lawmakers debated both making a series of points about the bills and the session long conversation. The testimony was that uh, how it doesn't exist in our libraries and yet we have parents, including friends of mine, that uh, bring me stuff from uh, the libraries around uh, that two second and third grade kids are getting. So we can all kind of hide our head a little bit and, and uh, say there isn't a problem. Uh, but uh, I think a lot of it's communication between the community and, and uh, those boards. And yes, they are elected, and you can unelect them every uh, so often. I, I don't think either of these bills is necessary, mostly because the librarians have process in place. There is not pornography in the libraries. There is material that some people think is quote unquote harmful and other people don't. And that is for a court to determine. And I think they already have. So I would ask us not to continue to encroach on this and to <laughs> let the librarians in their local communities incorporate the processes they have. I think they're being responsive. And there was public testimony from citizens and stakeholders early today, and that included a member of the Meridian Library District speaking on their own behalf. They made that clear. But he explained the consequences that he sees with legislation passing. If this law and some of the other laws before the, the legislature this year were to pass, my recommendation, recommendation to my fellow board members would likely immediately rescind all library cards for minors, 0 to 17, cancel those library cards, and then pass a policy forbidding any minors unaccompanied by their parents from whatever age of minor they may be from entering our library. We can't risk the legal, legal liability otherwise. So just one opinion, but you can get the real life reactions that the idea could really potentially have if this becomes law. Public organizations, they want to do everything they can to avoid being sued into oblivion, which is a concern of critics of the bill. Senator James Ruckty expanded on that in committee. 
let's talk about what's really going on here. We have a loud and angry group of citizens who have gone to their local library board with complaints. What's really happening here is they, they aren't getting the result they want. And that's not guaranteed under our system of government. Our system of government allows you to have redress, allows you to bring up your concerns to be heard. It, it does not guarantee you an answer. If it did, we'd have no reason to have a board. You just get what you want. We keep giving them additional opportunities to waste more people's time. Prosecutors, now the district courts. I've been involved in injunction hearings. It brings everything to a halt in the court system because the time frames are so short. Republican Senator Chuck Winder explained his views during the committee meeting, and he says that on the topic, his views have evolved after hearing and seeing circumstances for himself. Think about the difference in the types of books that are in the libraries today in our schools that children have access to. And I kind of poo-pooed all this until I was at my uh, grandson's birthday party last year. And uh, one of the mothers uh, from one of the uh, third graders that was there walked up and said, here's a book that my son brought home from his school library. It wasn't about baseball at all. It was age inappropriate. Both bills did pass the committee this morning. Lawmakers will soon take them fully up soon on the floor. A few other items for you, though, to mention on this Friday. One likely isn't going anywhere in the short term, but you never know. A bill called the Idaho Medical Cannabis Act was printed today, and it is a look at a very narrow medical marijuana pitch for the state of Idaho. And to be eligible for the medical cannabis, you would have to have a specific condition that is outlined in the law. Here's what it says. Eligibility is based on, quote, a substantial health condition such as cancer, ALS, AIDS, wasting syndrome, Crohn's disease, epilepsy, deliberating seizures, and terminal illness. And the law makes it clear that you could not smoke or vape medical marijuana. It would have to be taken via a tablet, a chewable, a droplet, or a pill containing up to 10 milligrams of THC. So, again, this really does have a good chance to not go anywhere in the short term because of how late we are in the session. But the pitch is now out there, and we get a lot of questions from you at home about marijuana in Idaho, medical marijuana. So uh, we've seen your text messages for weeks. There's your answer that was pitched today, and we'll keep an eye on it if it does going anywhere. But... Big picture wise at the big building downtown, what are we looking at in terms of wrapping up for the year? Well, today the Idaho House, they worked through everything they had left on their calendar and they're now in a position of waiting for the Senate. Idaho Senate still has some major work to get through in terms of budgets and bills. And we're also waiting on Governor Little to sign or not sign a collection of legislation sitting on his desk. And those will start trickling out and we'll keep you updated on what passes and what maybe he doesn't pass. But one of those that is having a lot of attention is the firing squad bill at 506 here on your Friday. No action on that one. But we do know that early today, Governor Little did sign the so-called bathroom bill. So that was signed into law and that is a done deal. So lots to track through the next week. The Idaho House is going to meet again on Tuesday as they wait on the Idaho Senate to finish on their calendar. And we do know on Monday there will be another run at the Idaho abortion laws. There's an effort to make sure that the medical and legislative community are on the same page. But before we end the legislative reporting for the week, we do have one more note for you. The Ovicto Dramas would be the best dinosaur to represent our state for three reasons. One, Idaho is the only state where a complete skeleton of the Erectodromies has been found. That is cool. Of all the dinosaurs we have found, Erectodromies is the only proven dinosaur to burrow for safety and, re and for reason it's in. Two, Erectodromies was a good mother and took care of its children. Families are very important to Idahoans. Because the Erectodromies was discovered here and had family values like ours, I believe it is a perfect fit to be Idaho's first state dinosaur. We've all been following a lot of legislation this session, but our favorite by far is the state dinosaur. And today, that bill hit the House floor for the third reading after public testimony from a lot of fourth graders this week, which you just heard, and we didn't know if there was going to be debate on it, but let's be real. There's always debate on something, right? 
Erectodromous fossils may be found in the Wayan Wayan Formation in the Caribou Mountains. Thank you, good gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, sometimes these emotional bills can get the best of us, and we don't think these things through. I want you to know there's six dinosaurs that have been located in Idaho, and what about those other five dinosaurs? <laughs> Are we not picking winners and losers here? <laughs> I have it on good authority this little dinosaur is favored by the minority party. <laughs> and I favor the dinosaur to be more correct for the majority party, the big one, the T-Rex, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the good lady from 32, who's following this emotional argument, she's already admitted this is a difficult dinosaur to pronounce. If you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't vote for it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I have it on good authority. The Paleontologist Society has given this a negative four. <laughs> and I don't want this to hurt my rating. George Soros does not oppose this bill. So, and my grandson wants the T-Rex. So for my grandson and for common sense thinking, please give this your red light. If you get jealous, for they don't motion. Try to beat that good gentleman, 21. I couldn't pronounce it then. I don't think I can pronounce it now. And I think the Idaho giant salamander would be very excited to get a new dinosaur friend. Perhaps we should expand the category and consider a state predator. Originally, I was in favor of Barney as our state dinosaur. But given the body of work that I've seen done, I have been persuaded that I believe we should now give this a green light that it deserves. Uh, for the good gentleman from Ten's uh, grandson, uh, we're perfectly fine with other dinosaurs being in the state of Idaho. Uh, this is just the one that's only found in Idaho and a tiny sliver of Montana. And if you take a look at your handout here, the kids say we can just call it Ori, like Oreo, except just Ori. And after all of that, drum roll please, the Idaho State Dinosaur passed the Idaho House this morning with overwhelming support, 61 to 2 with 7 absent. The two nays, Speaker Moyle and Representative Skog, who might have had the funniest debate of the year, good job there. And if you didn't get Skog's reference in his debate when he says we don't like to pick winners and losers, well, he was actually giving nod to Speaker Moyle for his famous catchphrase. When you start picking winners and losers is where I start having problems. So there you go, Representative Skog with a good memory, and the bill is now headed to Governor Little's desk where he can sign it into law, and that would make it all official. Oh, and if fifth graders can say it, then I think maybe the rest of the state too, including the legislature, although this news anchor will be sticking with Ori. All right, we'll be back after this.
Well, it's day three of Tree Fort, and maybe you've been bopping around and enjoying some music or checking out some of the different forts. Hopefully, you've managed to stay dry and warm, or maybe you're waiting to get the party started this weekend. Anyway, we wanted to show you some of the sights and sounds from the festival's first days to get you pumped heading into Tree Fort weekend. It's a community event and brings the community together. There's a lot of people that maybe interact at Tree Fort that would not normally interact other than that. There's 500 bands, right? It's five nights. You see, like, let's imagine you see 10 bands a day. You're just killing it to see bands. You've only seen 90% of the bands, so come to Tree Fort knowing you're going to basically miss Tree Fort, but you're going to enjoy the time you have here. Treefort for me has been a pretty radical change in um, kind of the ethos of our community, right? It has started to become more of a hub for arts and culture that uh, maybe 10 years ago, Boise wouldn't be thought of uh, as, as, a, as a hub like that. And because it encompasses such a wide range of interests, from food to music to art to film fort, comedy fort, uh, there's really something for everybody, and that's what's so special about Treefort. This is Spermantha. She is a 50-foot sperm whale. It took quite a, quite a few people to put her together. We've got most of the basic bones of her. Um, we've got pulley systems for littles. We've got a tail system there. Happy Tree Fort! So yeah, Tree Fort continues into the weekend. Excuse me, I got choked up. Uh, the festival goes all the way through Sunday, and there are a lot of ways to enjoy the different forts and music. And if you don't have a pass, do not worry. There are free forts and music venues spread all across the city of Boise. And that includes venues like Boise Brewing, which is awesome, Lost Grove, Fort Zone, where Ale Fort and the Band Shell are in Julia Davis Park. And a reminder for you, you can catch a free ride around Tree Fort on the Tree Line. The bus runs from 6 p.m. today through tomorrow, and the route on your screen takes you from the new main stage location in Julia Davis Park to other downtown venues on the loop. It goes every 10 minutes. If you haven't taken it, it works great. The best part is there are free concerts on the Tree Line all throughout the day. So yeah, you get transportation and a show, yet another way to have some great music. Also, if you have a wristband, you can ride any Valley Regional Transit bus for free uh, until tomorrow, but take note, there won't be any buses on Sunday. And you can find a full list of the lineups, concert times, and everything you need to know about Tree Fort on our website, or better yet, you can text us right now, Tree Fort, it's the number on your screen, the same number you always text us at, 208-321-5614. We'll send you the link directly to your phone, but remember, Tree Fort, all in one word, so make sure to text it like that, or we won't be able to get you the link. 208, step aside, we'll be back after this.
Our unsettled weather pattern continues today. On this Friday, we are seeing more scattered snow showers at all elevations, not just the mountains. And we are going to continue to see that as we go into the evening hours tonight. We've got two different pressure centers that's funneling that moisture into our region. So we're going to continue to see this flow of those scattered showers continue tonight. So here's what they look like. You can see they're moving pretty quickly on the radar. That means the winds are really kicking. So if you see some of these showers pop up, it'll be pretty quick hitting, not expecting too much accumulation at those valley levels. But again, we are expecting that to continue as we go into the evening tonight. Those temperatures are going to be staying 15 to 20 degrees below average through the weekend. So those colder temperatures are sticking around for us too. And those snow chances linger as we go into tomorrow as well. So if you're heading down to Tree Fort, you're going to continue to see those chances of some scattered showers and those breezy conditions. So Joe, yesterday I said maybe those suede shoes wouldn't be the best option because they were going to get wet. But today I think now maybe it's again not a, the best option because it's going to be maybe a little too cold. Real quick, I'm curious, mm -hmm. are you have any concerns about lightning in the area or is that probably not so problematic? So there's a little bit of a chance that we see a little bit more energy. I've been tracking it. We haven't seen any pop up yet and now we've passed the time where we've seen the peak heat of the day. So I think it's going to be a diminishing risk. Awesome. All right. Well, Sophia Bliss, our, our great meteorologist here on Friday at five on the 208. Thank you, Sophia, for keeping everyone informed and everyone will stay dry this weekend. All right. Well, we like to answer questions on Fridays here on the 208. And speaking of tree fort, Greg and Boise has this question. Greg, what do you have to say? He says, I'd like to know if the animals at the zoo, Zoo Boise, will be affected by the concert concerts, constant concerts during Tree Fort. Yes. Okay, so great question, Greg. And we reached out to Zoo Boise and Zoo Boise's executive director, Gene Peacock, and he said, quote, Zoo Boise worked with the Tree Fort team very early on in the process to make sure all of the animals would be okay during the festival. We reached out to other zoos that have live music events at or near their facilities to determine safe decibel ranges for the animals. Based off of this, we worked with Tree Fort organizers to set up things to have the lowest impact on animals at the zoo. And he said that Zoo Boise has been monitoring the sound levels all week and they've been checking in on the animals multiple times a day and so far, all is well with sound levels reaching levels similar to what they are on a very busy day at the zoo, for example. So, Greg, the animals are all good. Thanks for asking, and they're going to get a great show all weekend long, especially the giraffe, right?
Well, the comment Tron 7000 is, is loaded with your comments, so let's see what we got. All right, this person says, yeah, for Ori. <laughs> Ori's now the state dinosaur. Good job, Ori. All right, this person says, dinosaur. Just wondering what bathroom they would have to be allowed to use. That's from Flap. Probably the biggest bathroom, I don't know. That's a good question, though. I'll ask some lawmakers. Uh, this person says, Joe, Brian, once the legislature wraps up, can you please give your viewers a recap of all the bills that made it to Governor Little's desk and how many of them take rights away versus expanding them? Thanks, that's Bill in Boise. Bill, that's a great pitch. Let's do that. Keep an eye out for next week. Uh, this person says, love the Tree Fort Report. Boise is such a great town. It's from Harry. Harry, we all agree. That's fantastic. Uh, this person says, important news. Breaking. Uh, Scott Knickerbocker and I will be playing on the Tree Line bus tonight, 7.30 to 8.30. Mike in Boise. Okay, so go see 208 viewer Mike on the, on the bus line at 7.30. Mike, thanks for writing in. Uh, this person says, why do they have Tree Fort when they do? Long story short, I think they do it now for tour purposes, but I will ask the event organizers of Tree Fort this weekend, and we will circle back to this. Do we have one more? There's a dog. <laughs> 